All right, Dr. Hami. Yes, so this is voice, please. The idea of Islamic belief since the beginning was taking into account the fact that Muslims are generous with zakat. Um, we had to establish some sort of like an organization in order to keep trace and keep track of the money, of the of expenditure. And we have sort of like a structure in order to keep continuing with the collection of Zakia, but also implementing projects that require the, the funds collected from Zakia. In order not to risk so not to risk that the cat can go in wrong hands, etc. Now, given the specificity of today's age, what do you think that, or in how, what, what way we should proceed in terms of the new strategy that should be adopted today regarding the cat and the collection of the cat and the implementation of uh, the projects requiring funds from the cat? Okay, thank you, brother Elia and welcome Sister Sukaina, uh, as well as the rest. First of all, we have to realize, have to admit, that zakat is a part of the deen. It's not something we just collect. It is deen. It's a pillar of Islam. Like Hajj, like Psalm, like Salah, it's one of the pillars of Islam. Which if you don't believe in zakat and you have the money, if you don't pay for the poor, we could be charged for not being proper Muslim. And that's why Abu Bakr declared war against the people who refused to pay zakat after the death of the Prophet. So first of all, zakat is deen. All right, this is actually for everybody to understand. The second point is zakat is the only institution inside Islam. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Wal amin alayna." It is one of the expenditure of zakat. Why? Because we need this money to employ people to make a report about the rich and the poor in the community. Then we can go to the rich and take the cash from them and give to the poor. That's number one. Number two, we need those people to study the situation of the poor. Okay? Are they eligible or not? Number three, we need to find people to distribute the cash on the poor. Number four, we need somebody to measure the impact of the expenditure of, expenditure of the car and the community. That's why from the very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as wal amin alayhi. If you divide the 100% of it, at least it will be 12%. Sometimes it will be more. So the only institution inside the structure of Islam is the car. As this is mentioned by Dr. al Quradagi from Qatar. Clear? So we should not treat zakat like anything else because salah is personal, hajj is personal, kalimat at tawheed is personal, saum is personal, but zakat is community building. This is number one. Number two, we should not treat zakat as transaction. Like Sister Sukaina, we have the cat is 50 pounds, so she will transfer it by bank account. It's not enough. It's not good enough. The cat is more important than being a bank transfer or bank transaction. The cat is more important than bank transfer or bank transaction. Bank transfer is a tool to get the cat from this community to this community. To do what? To do what we need to find. What is the zakat? Soft power out. This is the introduction to the answer of your question. 
Nowadays, a lot of non-Muslim organizations they started to raise fund zakat, to collect zakat. I'm not going to mention any of these organizations. I said, okay, like any donor, Western or Eastern or Northern or Southern, what condition on his funding criteria? Let us look at how can we both strategically condition to the people who are not Muslims and this is the fund of Zakat. Some of the people can come and tell you because of this difficulty in my transfer, we are going to raise the fund of Zakat and give it to the poor people, Muslim ones. It's okay. But Zakat is not a transaction. The kind of community is built. And then this, let me take you by some of the things that have been mentioned by others. And this, We mentioned the Sepeda of Islam and why some of the non Muslim organizations are raising the cat. Because they said you cannot transfer the money and we raise the zakat uh, through the banking system and transfer it to the Muslim community. And some of them even said that we are not going to claim any administration cost. Okay? This is if we consider the card as a transaction. But the card is not a transaction. Alright? Uh, okay, and here let us. Yes, no words. Yeah, I have a technical um, question. Okay. Uh, nowadays, with the banking system, there are sometimes uh, fees that are taken in percentage of, uh, of uh, each transaction. Yeah. As far as it's not a transaction. So how can we perceive that? Because if someone gives, like, for example, 5,000 right, as a cap, but to our account comes only 4,980. You have to claim it. You have to declare it, sorry. Okay. You have to declare it. This is the bank charges. Okay. Bank charges not only on zakat. Yes. In everything. Mm -hmm. You have to be very transparent mm -hmm. with your donors. Yes, I can answer to Ahmed. That's okay. something that we will also add on the website. So when you proceed, you also have uh, on the bottom if you want to you know that, for example, 2.5% is a bank fee. So you can either pay the bank fee of 2.5% or let it, but at least you know. Yeah. You know that in your... 100 euros or a pound or one that you send, 2.5 dollar okay. or euro is spent for the bank fees. Okay. So as a Muslim, we need to educate. Yeah, we need to educate. But like, for example, if my zakat is, uh, is 100, right? And I know there is 2.5 percent going to the bank. Should I give 2.5 more to compensate? No, 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 no. Should no. I give more? No, because no. You, you're, you're, you're Okay, it's part of the administration fees. Mm. If you want to say to your donor, mm. if you want to 100 pound, go 100%, you have to pay the bank transfer charge. Mm. You have to give me 102 pounds, mm. 103 pounds, 103 euros. Mm. Okay, here is the process of education, mm. telling the people who pay 5,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds, well, the bank will charge us 2%. 2% of the 5,000 pounds, you talk about 100 pounds, that means that your zakat will be 4,900. Mm. If you think that you are not feeling comfortable, you give me the admin administration of the transaction. Tell the donor to do that. It's clear. Okay. okay. Here, I think the question came to us, especially when we found that some of the international non Muslim organizations strategically mm -hmm. raising funds for Zakat and they're employing mm -hmm. 
a lot of Muslims read this one from them. This has been raised over the last five, six years. And some of those organizations have developed a strategy. And their strategy is being done by some Muslims working for them. We are not going to attack them, but we are going to tell them what do you understand of what do you mean by the community action of the community role of the church as a community building box. Next one, please. So as I mentioned, what is the problem? The problem here that the banks impose restriction on transfer made by Muslim NGO to many countries. Okay? And sometimes banks close down many Muslim NGO bank account. That's right? Without explanation. Next. Please. Also, regarding to the counter extremism, counter terrorism policies, anything called Muslim or Islam has a big suspicion. Whether you are guilty or not guilty. You are guilty by association to Islam. Number four, this affected millions and millions and millions of people who are right holders. What do you mean by right holders? The poor people who own the zakat money and their zakat money is lost. We cannot transfer such money to them because the bank is becoming a difficulty for getting this money to reach them. So they suffer more and more and more. So when we look at this, these challenges, bank transfer restriction, closing of bank accounts, counter extremism, counter terrorism, and the, the impact on the people who should be receiving this money, these non-Muslim organizations say, okay, fine, we can help you. Let us take the money, and it's easy for us to transfer the money from this place to this place to the people whom they are Muslim. Clear? It's clear. Any questions? Any questions? All right. Here, we are looking together for the solution. Okay? But the condition, if you are a donor, you always put condition to donate the money or to, to the people like myself to take your money. So if you take my money, you have to do one, two, three, four, five. Whether this donor is a Muslim or non-Muslim, local or international, UN or others, each one of the donors have got their own criteria of funding you, their own funding criteria for us, which is this is normal practice. And you accept the regulation of this organization, we spoke about five, six points. If you don't follow these six points, you are not going to get the money from you. Whether you like it or not. You have to obey my rules and my regulation. Okay. So uh, we put three conditions. Before we look at the soft power of the bank. The three conditions, if any non-Muslim organization would like to take the money of the cap, okay, and spend it, fine, we have no problem. But the first condition, the cat must not be given to religious organization whose religion opposes Islamic faith. This is the condition. Okay? The cat funds would help them spread their non-Muslim ideology. This is the first condition. If you as an organization would like to give the cat money, you should declare that you are not opposing the Muslim faith. Okay? This is number one. Number two, this institution must not be intellectual, cultural, humanistic, philosophical, and what's the philosophical word? which oppose the philosophy, path, and ethics of Islam. I don't mean. It does not oppose the philosophy and the culture and the values of Islam. 
Agreed? The third condition, and these are, those, these are the two conditions. So, should not, this one, uh, oppose Islamic faith, Islamic culture, Islamic philosophy, Islamic government. If you are like this, you have no problem with that. Alright? Clear? Any question? So let us now look at the second societal condition that reflects the soft power of Zakat. What are the soft power of Zakat? Everything has soft power. What is soft power? It is the power that will enable you to reach the society in a more approachable and softer way. What are the soft powers of Zakat? Number one, Zakat is upholding the principles of worship and the criteria of Zakat soft power. So you should, as organization, uphold the soft power of Zakat. Okay? Because Zakat is not only bringing the first one. Yeah. Okay, so. Because zakat is not only a ritual, okay, but an essential pillar of Islam. Are you going to use this of power as an essential pillar of Islam? And this applies to all Islamic rights, Sharia, such as zakat al fitr Salafa, and Qurban. Yeah, zakat itself is not just transaction, it's not just a worship, it's just uh, something which actually uh, implements the Sharia of Islam. Number two of the soft power, establishing and consolidating Islamic spirit. If you are a non-Islamic organization, will you be able to establish the Islamic spirit among this, the poor people who are taking or getting the cash from you, would you be able to establish this? It's clear for you. Will you be able to establish and consolidate the Islamic spirit as a non Muslim organization? Number three, will you be able to build the confidence in the hearts of the poor people? When they receive the zakat from us, confidence what? Confidence in Islam. Because the money comes from the Muslims. Number four, will you be able to support Islamic principles, value, ethics, culture, philosophy, among this, the people? These are the soft powers of the zakat. It's clear. All these are soft powers of the zakat. Will you be able to uphold Islamic history, purify Sunnah of the Prophet, the fragrant biography of the Prophet and the Sahaba? Will you be promoting all this? Because from the Kaab, the Muslim are doing that. Promoting Sunnah, the Seerah of the Prophet and the Seerah of the Sahaba and the Islam. Number six, will you be raising? The Islamic awareness among us, the poor people, of the Islamic awareness. Okay? Love the religion. Number seven, will be increasing the social cohesion through building strong local civil society institutions. Use this money to bring the community together through civil society institutions. Number eight, investing in building the leaders of future generation from among the Muslims. Okay, this will be spent on the Muslims because this is a worship. Money is not just a transaction. Number nine, highlighting the humanitarian message of Islam and providing good role models for the children. Who are the good role models of Islam? From the Zakat money, you can make, you can publish stories about Khulafa 
about Sahaba, about Tabi'in, about scholars, about Islamic civilization. Then they get the transformed into what? It is a big issue, which we'll talk about, which actually, they said that cash should be spent within one year. Okay. What is more than one year? Okay. okay. Number 10, will you be able to spend the cash on fighting extreme violence, isolation, isola isolationism, and terrorism? Because this could be used by the money of the cat to find this extremism and radicalism, which the Muslims are accused of having. It. Number 11, fighting Islamophobia. Nowadays, we are living in a world which is governed by Islamophobia. Will we be able to take the cat money and on our path fighting Islamophobia and hatred? Of the other religions. Number 12, the administrations in charge of administering the cat and others matters should be Muslims. And who is going to dispute the cat? Will you appoint Muslims, male or female, or not the Sharia, inside out, wholeheartedly? It's another condition. Number 3, Workers in charge of distributing zakat and sadaqa, funds and places of need must be Muslims as well. Not only the people who share who are distributing it, I mean who are in charge of the zakat funding, but the people who are distributing it as their local work. So these 13 conditions are like the soft power of zakat. If you, as a non-Muslim organization, can fulfill this criteria, we have no problem with it. We have no problem with it. Next. That's what I'm saying. That's okay, that's finished. So, that's good. So, that's good. So, when we look at all these... I can put it. When we look at all, yeah, we can look at all these conditionality and the soft power, like any organization, like any organization, giving you money, whether it's X or Y or Z or whatever it is, what's the condition? Mm. But uh, what we call it donor culture. Mm. Donor culture is on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you follow our culture, we'll give you our money. So why should you take the money of the cat, which is the cat is a pillar of Islam, part of the deed, without having any conditionality, and without you following the soft power? of the cat itself. Mm. This was the question to respond back to you. That does not you does not stop you from making your own strategy. You make us making strategy is something and discussing the soft power of the cat is something else. Soft power means what the cat can do in the community. Yeah. What the cat can do in the community. And if anyone of us getting the zakat to distribute it, he or she should understand the soft power of zakat, which enabled them to build the local community, enabled them to bridge the gaps between the rich and the poor. In one of our talks, we said, even the poor country should pay, should pay zakat for the much poorer country. Suppose that you are from Somalia and you are a big businessman. You have the eligibility of spending 80-90% of your money as a cat inside your local community because they need it. Mm -hmm. But 5-10% should be spent from you on a much poorer country, be Niger, Mali, or Chad. One percentage? 5-10%. So 90% in your local community because it's very poor and the five ten percent and that. so the other people who are actually receiving the ten percent from you will be very very impressed and very connected to the people of Somalia yeah. who spend their zakah in Niger. And, and this happened and, and just 
This happened uh, more than once with the Syria last year and the year before. When the winter came and people were living in tents and it was covered by snow, mm -hmm. who was raising the fund for them? The Palestinians from their camps. And the 10 million dollars came from Palestine, some of them were refugees, some of them were displaced, some of them were poor, to go to the camps in Syria, in different parts. 10 million? Yeah. Allah. This was in one year. Allah. And one of the young girls, she mentioned in her video, my dream is just to have a new tent at the new year. This was a year ago. My dream is to have a new pair of shoes. My dream is to have a, a what do you call it, a dog and, uh, to play with. And this actually, when they found that the cat is coming from Palestine, which is a poor community, too much poorer in the displaced people of Syria, inside Syria, this is another connection, mm. actually, between a poor and poor, not only a rich and poor. This is to conclude this point. Yes, brother, you want to ask something? Uh, on, on what is based this division of 90% for the this, uh, this suggestion? And 10% for the other. Yeah, this suggestion. Because you know, the reason I'm asking is because the I think the this thing, yeah. of the Somali businessman is not the same as the 10% of, let's say, uh, Palestinian businessmen. You see, when you look at it, it is all Ishtihad. All this that need to be supported by ulama. What I'm saying here, even if you are a rich businessman in a poor country, you don't only look at your own people. Yeah. You take whatever percentage and give it to somebody else who is much poorer. Yeah. This will bond yeah. the relationship between the community in this country and the community in this country. This is what we wanted to happen. This is what we wanted to happen between the Niger and the Malian, maybe the Chadian and the Nigerian and others. Yeah. When people say, where does money come from? It comes from Somalia, SubhanAllah. So the bond between Niger and Somalia, the bond between Palestine and Syria, this kind of bond is a part of the soft power of getting the Zakat even with the poorer. Because from the rich countries, like the Gulf and the European, could be you spend 20-30% inside the country itself and 70-80% in much poorer country. But you forget, you, you, you remember that in your country, as a rich country, there's still some poor people. Need the car. So there's nothing called 100%. Nothing called 100% abroad or 100% locally. So you have to balance. And all this, brother Elir, is ishtihad. Maybe the ulama can come and say, okay, let us look at the percentage. Mm -hmm. Let us look at the history. Because in the good old days, there was a state of Islam was looking after all the community members. Whether at the time of the Ottoman Empire, or the Andalusian, or the uh, uh, Abbasi, or uh, what is the other one? Umayyad. Okay? This, we are the time of the Prophet after at the time of Umar and the Khalifah So the state was actually looking after this. Now there is no a global state to look after all the poor people. It becomes now a responsibility of the rich man and the organization to look in a very diversified way how to distribute the zakat locally yeah. and the international. We are as Islamic belief, 30 years ago, we made this equation. 30% of the cat raised in UK to be spent in UK, the same, the rest should be spent abroad. This was 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Some of you, for some of you were not born 30 years ago, especially all the girls were born in 20 years ago. All of them. No matter how old are they are, they are still in the 20s. Ah, okay. But you have been born 70 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> being old. I have a question for you. Yes, okay. So, what's your opinion now? We, we talked about 
in organization that are not Muslim collecting zakat. For example, the year the HCR, the IOM, you know, you have like special people, as, as you said, you know, collecting the zakat. How, how, how is it going with this trend? There is more and more international organization going that way. There is no opinion about the condition and the soft power that should be given to the non-Muslim organization on how to spend the zakat and how to raise the fund of zakat. Unfortunately, nothing. Nothing written by the Muslims. Uh, yeah, there is a policy that we can say. No, no, no. Policy is different from collection. A policy is your own policy. That in your own policy, you can say, I'm, going not to, I'm not going to charge administration. I'm going to give it to the poor Muslim in Muslim countries. There is no problem with me taking it and distributing it there. This is a policy. But in the policy, there are more than that. Mm -hmm. What are other soft power that you can bring to the table? I'm just trying to say, or we are trying to say, if there is conditionality on any donor, why well, there is no conditionality on the cat expenditure? Or the card fundraising. That's what I'm saying. That's what people are called this paper. Is it clear? Kind of. Yeah. 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 Because there's something in you. It's something in you, and ulama should sit down and discuss it objectively mm -hmm. and positively on how can we be sure that while you are Sending the zakat to poor Muslim countries, we have to put the, uh, look at this criteria. The criteria could be 10 points, could be 20 points, could be 5 points. Let's agree on the criteria. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, well, do you think that the collection of zakat has changed? Let's say 30 years ago, that when you made this equation of 30% in the UK and 70% outside of the UK, do you think that today, with the inflation and the crisis in Ukraine, uh, do you think that the percentage should change? Especially it depends the, on the. Nothing is fixed. Nothing is Quran. Yeah. Even in Quran, there's many interpretation or tafsir in the Quran. It will affect the main school of thought. Okay, so it is actually measured by the ulama about the percentage. Sometimes it could be 30, 70, sometimes maybe 20, 80, sometimes it could be 40, 60. Mm -hmm. It depends on maybe sometimes there's a disaster in a rich country. So instead of spending only 30%, you must spend 50% in the rich country. Because they need more like actually what what happened in uh, the earthquake in, 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 in Turkey yeah. this year? You must say that okay, we spend 60% or more in Turkey. Before the earthquake, there was less to be spent in Turkey mm -hmm. at that time. So, with this kind of changing uh, atmosphere because of the, of the conflict, or because of the earthquake, or because of the flooding, or because of the tsunami. You have to you have to be accommodating. Flexible. You have to be flexible. Zakala Hayat. Shukran. Yes. Yes. Ask questions. No, everything is clear. <laughs> Ask questions. You want a break? To do what? <laughs> to to rest a little bit after. It. For me, my break is being with you. Allah, Allah, Allah. It is uh, still three hours for the talk. You know, unless you want to ask other, other questions. So I am open for anything. Ya yeah, Allah. I am open for anything. Ya yeah, Allah. Uh, Dr. Hamid, do you have uh, a rough idea of what you're going to speak tonight at the commemoration? Sh should I stop the recording? Or? Well, if you finish with this, 
but mm -hmm. yeah, this is um, my question was outside. Okay, so, but for uh, Zakat, I don't know. No, it's not Zakat.